Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In the last video, I talked about my philosophy in photography and the print being the last or the final goal whenever I go out shooting. But now let's go and digress many, many decades, go back to the film era. Now, I have here a couple of examples. I don't have too many of my old silver images around anymore, but I do have a couple of examples. But let me tell you how, if you were lucky enough to enter into the photographic world during the days of film cameras. Let me tell you how that sort of uh, integrates into the digital era. I don't know if you remember, but there were phrases used to describe certain films. So films that were slow ASA, now is ISO, meaning that they were low sensitivity to light, had a very fine so-called grain structure. We'll get into what that means. Medium speed films, like Plus X, 125 ISO or ASA, had a medium grain structure. And Tri-X at that time was the normal go-to film whenever you were shooting in low light situations. And that had a coarse grain structure. And I believe it was 400 ASA. And you could push it during the development to maybe uh, gain a stop or a stop and a half extra, about a thousand ASA max. And so that would allow you to um, be able to go into lower light situations and capture pretty good images, but they were very, very grainy. So how does grain relate to resolution? Well, grain is nothing but the actual physical granules of blackened silver. Silver halides is what made up the emulsions, but they were just salts, silver salts. And of course, they had no color, they, had, they were just a, a, a dissolved silver salts in, a, in an emulsion applied to um, celluloid uh, plastic. And so when that was exposed to light, it was then developed and the developer would reduce the silver salts by taking the chloride out of it or the salt ion. I'm not a chemist, so I'm just guessing. And then reducing it down to pure silver. But it wasn't just regular shiny pure silver. It would be tarnished, fully tarnished black silver granules. So Panatomic X was the go-to film for low grain structure. That produces very, very small granules. Those little tiny black granules of silver were very small. Now, as you go up in the speed range of films, the grains would become larger and larger. So think of it this way. If a, a certain lens had a resolution of uh, 50 lines per millimeter, and that's the way they were rated, 50, 100, 150 lines per millimeter. When you use that same lens on Panatomic X, since the granules of silver were very, very small, that film was able to resolve finer detail that that lens can actually produce than, say, Tri-X could. Tri-X silver clumps were actually huge compared to Panatomic X. So Tri-X did not produce the finely detailed images or prints that Panatomic X could uh, produce. But the Panatomic X was 32 ASA and Tri-X was 400. So, you know, that tells you a difference in speed and sensitivity. So, wow, how does that translate to digital? Well, think about it as a low resolution digital camera compared to a high resolution or high megapixel digital camera. Back in the days, uh, the first digital cameras were only 600, 640 by uh, 480. That was it. So little snapshots like that, that's all you could make. Otherwise, you would see pixels in your prints. So pixel count, say per inch, the more pixels you have per inch, the less they are visible on your final print. Now, if you have a lens that's very high resolution, the more pixels you have, the more detail you can capture. With film, high resolution lens, the finer the granules of silver, the more you could capture that fine detail that that lens could indeed produce. But often in our photography, we were um, quite marveled back in the 60s. Everybody loved high contrast, grungy, looking photography, so they pushed Tri-X to the max. 
maybe 1200 ASA, meaning they have to underexpose and overdevelop that film to bring it back to a certain level of density that you could print and produce a decent print. So doing that would increase even more those clumps of silver. So you had very grainy looking images, but people love that grainy looking, uh, grungy look to their prints. Well, now everybody is into the, uh, the higher the, the megapixel of your digital camera, the better it is. Well, the fact of the matter is that we have lost that look, that look that we so loved back in the 60s and 70s. Well, from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that era was the, for me, the, my era. That's when I learned photography. And so I missed that look. I have a couple of examples here. And this is a real silver image, not RC paper. This is the high level silver paper. And it's glossy. And I shot this in Korea in 1969, almost 70, when I was in the army. And as I look at it, I see that wonderful film grain everywhere is homogenous. Now, film grain would be smaller in the shadow areas, okay? Because remember, on the negative, the shadow areas are practically clear. So anything that was dark meant that it did not get exposed by a high level of light. So it had very little effect on the silver emulsion and thus produced very little uh, reduction of silver, which meant that the little granules were very small and that area was practically clear and they would produce shadows, okay? Dark tones. So in the negative, these are transparent. The highlights are the denser areas of the negatives. And so why are they dense? Because they have more silver granules and they are actually clumped into larger clumps. In the shadows, the granules are actually small and tiny. In the highlights, the, the granules are actually larger and clumped into big clumps of silver, literally. And so the grain structure would be more pronounced in the highlights. So you have this transition of grain structure from the shadows to the highlights, becoming coarser and coarser as the tonalities become lighter and lighter. And that is something that no one has been able to duplicate in digital photography. There's lots of filters that you can apply that just basically give you overall grain. But in real film photography, grain was not just a global uh, look. It changed depending on density. So I hope somebody comes up with some sort of filter that produces the correct amount of grain. I know that um, Silver FX uh, plugin sort of does that. And I haven't really delved too much into it to see whether it can actually produce the real, real, honest to goodness film grain and not just an overall application of a global uh, type of grain. But uh, anyway, um, here's another image. And this one's a little bit grungy. This was shot on Tri-X. And it's my poor oldest daughter, very sick. She had a fever, stayed home that day from school. And here she is with her holly hobby. I think she is on a teddy bear not a panda bear, and she's laying in bed just feeling miserable. And I shot a little pic of her and uh, printed it on glossy, on ferrotype paper. This is full silver paper. And again, here the grain is very, very, very small and tight. And here in the lighter areas, it's more pronounced. And that's the way that film um, translated itself, I guess, physically to print. And the look is just something that really you cannot capture very easily digitally. And so let's go over to the digital wor world. Now this, you know, I look at this immediately. I say, that's, that's film. That was shot with film, no doubt. Now digital basically produces very smooth images, almost creamy looking. They don't look like film anymore. They look homogenous. Tonalities are just creamy. And people have forgotten what it looks like to print on film. Here's my standard image done on matte paper. Now, let me go back. We had several textures to work with. You had glossy. You had a semi-gloss, which is like a type E type print, which was not ferrotype. It was just air dried on a drum. And uh, then you had matte. 
And then you had several textures. You had a weird one called silk, which looked like a little pattern of a, just a grid. I hate that. It scans horribly because it actually has a raised pattern on it. And when you try to scan to, uh, so if you have to do a, a um, restoration on an old photograph that was done on, on silk paper, absolutely horrible to work with and very difficult. But at any rate, now we have a multitude, a multitude of different papers with every kind of surface texture you can think of. And cameras, let me tell you a secret, folks. Today's cameras, are able to out, or let's just say today's sensors are able to outperform the lenses pretty much. A 24 plus megapixel, even higher. And even those cameras that have special super high megapixel backs for like uh, studio cameras, like uh, the kind that uh, a lot of commercial studios use, they have a special digital back. And you know, you're talking about 60 megapixel. They're able to outperform the lens. Film always pretty much underperformed the lens. Due to the grains of silver, a grain of silver was always larger than the finest detail the lens could produce. Whereas nowadays, the finest detail that the lens can produce is larger than a pixel. Okay? In in one inch. So Cameras now produce what I feel are very natural looking images because they actually look like the way you see them with your eyes. Everything is smooth and, 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 and gradual. Whereas film had a more, um, I don't know, graphical look to it, which I love. But anyway, here is some matte paper. Here's my little collage on glossy. And to me, I hate glossy. I love the old glossy because it wasn't this glossy, okay? It just looked beautiful and it had like a burrita, like today's burrita gloss papers. They have a little slight pearly, pebbly surface to them and it's just lovely. But yeah, the old glossy, nothing comes close to that. And here is semi-gloss, well, semi-gloss, no, this is actually a luster. And luster is okay. It comes relatively close to the look of the the uh, unferrotype gloss paper of the silver era. Problem is, it's got this plasticky look to it. You know, it just has it. And again, I see no grain whatsoever. A, an image this big shot on film would definitely have grain. And so it loses that photographic look, if you want to call that look photographic. This is more like a reproduction to me. This is a reproduction of that truck in that field. You know, it's smooth. There, there is no indication that this was shot with anything. It looks like I'm looking through a window and there's a truck. So there's nothing. There's no texture on the overall image. There's no texture in the shadows. There's no texture on this dense, bright areas that film would produce due to that grain. But this is what we have now, folks. So we have to appreciate it. Matte paper. So this is your matte semi um, type. Uh, I think it has a bit of a texture to it. And this acts a little bit more character to the image, but it's still, these tones here should have grain. If it was filmed, this would be grainy. This is so creamy, it almost looks as, like it's gonna melt off the paper. And it's just not the look that was around back in the film days. Okay, is that good? Is that bad? Well, it's up to you. The differences are there. Um, it depends on what you prefer. If you were never exposed, if you're only in your 20s or 30s, maybe you were never exposed to film, so you really don't know. And the way to know is to be shown both. And then you can make an assessment. You can actually look and say, okay, wow, that look was awesome. Or ah, I prefer today's look better. And you need to be able to have that in your background so that you can make a 
really an intelligent choice and not just say, oh no, today's cameras and today's process is vastly superior to the silver process. Well, you know, have you ever seen the silver process? No, I haven't. Then how can you possibly make that assumption or that statement or that claim? You really cannot. Here's an image that would be great for a nice grungy tri-x shot, okay? This would be awesome for that. And yet it looks as smooth as molasses. The is super, super detail. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot complain. It looks as if I shot it with film that was even finer grain than Panatomic X, which at that time was the best fine grain film in the industry. And it had to be developed a certain way for you to be able to enhance that low grain or very almost imperceptible grain look. And it was great for certain things, but it really wasn't good for capturing fast moving, you know, football players being tackled into the mud with mud flying everywhere. That asked for the grungy look of Tri-X. And with a 24 megapixel camera, full uh, frame type camera, you just don't get that look. You have to actually add that in post-processing. And when you try to do that, it's not really real looking. Remember, I described the that it's not global, the green that, that digital, um, that film produced, I should say. It changed in size from the darkest shadow. It was very, very tiny and tight. And the brighter highlights were actually composed of heavy clumps of green. And that's what gave film that special look. And it's a look that I still love. Um, again, I'm still searching and searching and searching for a process that will be able to reproduce that in print and still use the digital process. One way you can do that, there is a fail-proof way to do that. And that is to scan your old negatives. And you scan them at the highest possible optical resolution that you can possibly do it in. So you capture every, every little grain clump and every little... Uh, you know, anything that's in that negative has to be captured beyond the resolution of the negative. So you have to use a high enough capture resolution to exceed what the negative has to offer. And that's the only way. Then when you go ahead and print that and you enlarge it, you will have your original grain that the film had. But you're using the digital process now and you're able to do a lot more uh, post uh, shooting manipulation to the image than you were able to do in the darkroom. In the darkroom, we were limited to dodging and burning in application of hot developer or cold water to certain areas of the image to either slow down the developing process or to increase the developing process. And they did that locally. Ansel Adams was a, an expert at doing that. And he kept copious notes per print. And he was able to reproduce the same effect on every single print to the point where the user really didn't see the difference. That's why they paid tens of thousands of dollars for any of his images in print. All right, that's it. I hope that did not put anybody to sleep. I find it a very interesting subject and several of you asked me if I would be willing to discuss that in video. And uh, I'm going to go back and dig up a box of folding cameras that I have. They're all roll film cameras of the folding variety. And I hope that you guys will enjoy looking at these oldies. All right. Thanks once again. I will have, I have a little list of other topics to talk about here. So hopefully I will be able to do this uh, list this week and provide it for you guys. So you have something to watch late nights on this coming up, coming up weekend. And uh, like I said, I hope this is a good year. I showed you these earlier. The cartridges are coming probably this week. And hopefully it will prove to be something that's usable. I hope so. If it doesn't, well, then that's the way to find out. You have to test. All right. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell so you get notified whenever I upload new material. Share and like, as always. You guys have really been helping me with the likes. If you don't like it, go ahead and hit on like. But at least tell me why you don't like it. Some people just click on like to be mean. And they fly away and they don't tell me. So this is not one of those channels where people don't care. I actually care what I put out. And I hope you guys enjoy it and, and like it. All right. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.